Hi, I'm Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making a chocolate cherry walnut rugula. And if you haven't ever had a rugula, you don't know what you're missing. It's an Eastern European cookie that is so flaky and rich. It's phenomenal. Now a typical rugula dough has three ingredients in it. That's it. It's not a sweet dough. It is pretty savory, pretty sort of uh, neutral. So you can do whatever you want with the filling. You can actually make a savory rugula or you can make a sweet rugula. And today I've chosen to do a chocolate walnut cherry. So we're going to be putting in eight ounces of cream cheese, softened. So I've left it at room temperature till it gets softened or you can throw it in the microwave. Um, and two sticks of butter. So it's eight ounces of butter, eight ounces of cream cheese. It's a one to one ratio. The butter and the cream cheese should be really soft. All right, so we're going to put that into our electric mixer. And I'm going to not add our flour yet. You're going to add two cups of flour, but right now we want to get the butter and the cream cheese blended pretty well. And they're nice and soft. Now, you can see the majority of this dough, because that is the dough, those three ingredients, it's fat. Fat is going to add flakiness because fat coats the gluten strands of the flour. And what is gluten? Gluten is these pro this protein matrix in wheat flour, and all-purpose flour, that's what we're going to be using, has proteins in it that form gluten when they're blended with water. So there's no water in this dough except whatever is in the butter and cream cheese. There may be a little water just to give it structure. And gluten does give baked goods structure. We need structure in everything that we have that's a baked good. But we really want a tender, flaky baked good in our rugula. So that's why we're using so much fat. And what's happening is, and I'm just letting this go because we want to sort of get it nice and light. And then we're going to add our, our flour very, very gradually. We're going to be creating these layers of dough, fat, dough, fat, dough, fat. And the cream cheese is a fat as well. And because we're going to be doing that and making these sort of sheets of dough and sheets of fat, the fat and the dough are going to be forming flakes, flakiness. So any water that's in that fat, whether it's in the butter or the cream cheese, will actually turn to steam in the oven and push up on the dough above it and below it. And there are your flaky layers. So it's, it's, there's nothing like it. It almost melts in your mouth. So I'm going to slowly add my flour, two cups of all-purpose flour, flour from the wheat plant so it will form some gluten. But again, the fat is going to coat the gluten strands and actually prevent them from hooking up too much so they get really, really tight and form a very tough baked good. So if you think about what a pizza dough is or something like a, a bagel, that's more of a tougher structure. It has a lot more gluten in it. This, we're trying to prevent the gluten from developing. So we keep adding our flour, add it slowly so it just doesn't go all over you. That's a good thing, right? And then we're gonna take this dough, and believe it or not, it's done after this, and we're gonna chill it. You can chill it for as little as a couple of hours, or you can chill it overnight. And say you wanna make rugula tomorrow, you can take it out and sort of get it a little bit softer. You don't want it rock hard, but we do want it hard enough that we can, uh, firm enough that we can roll it out. Okay, so let me add the rest of my flour, all right. And always in a uh, electric mixer, and you'll see this, you'll see that not all of the ingredients are going to be mixed in perfectly. So what I'm going to do, I am going to use my hands, and I'm going to push the paddle free of any dough. All right. And then with my hands, I'm actually going to go to the bottom of that bowl. A lot of people don't go to the bottom of the bowl, so there's a lot of ingredients at the bottom of the bowl, like flour, in our case, or unmixed butter and cream cheese, and we really want to make sure that we get those blended in. So I'm just going to pull it together. I'm not at all going to knead it, but you can see, you see this? It's always in an electric mixing bowl because it has a little indentation on the bottom to let that paddle 
work its um, mixing magic. So I'm just going to go around and gather, almost like the dough is a sponge and I'm sort of picking up crumbs. And I just want to rotate the dough top to bottom so I can pick up all those crumbs. Don't leave them because that's part of your dough and that's good ingredients, right? Right there. So we're just going to get that going. And I'm really not kneading it. I'm actually treating it pretty gently. Another thing that you do when you rest a dough or you give it sort of a refrigerator break, if you will, is sort of um, give it a rest and that will also relax any gluten that did form because mixing also develops gluten. So that rest in the refrigerator will help the dough get a little firmer and will also relax that gluten because we want a tender and flaky rugula. And I lost a little dough there, so I'm going to pick that up. So now I'm going to detach my bowl, come over here, and I'm going to put this in a piece of plastic wrap. Simple as that. I'm going to wrap the plastic wrap around it, sort of like you would put a baby in for a nap, sort of like swaddle it real, real tight. And this is a secret that I love to tell people because it really helps. Push it down and shape it into what you want it to be ultimately. And we want a rectangle. So try to get it into a squarish shape right now. That'll make shaping a lot easier when you're ready to go. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and I'll see you back for shaping. So our dough is chilled, maybe for about an hour or uh, overnight if you'd like. It just has to get a little bit firmer or else when you roll it out, it'll be too soft. Now we're going to uncover it. And you want to be careful, if it's really hot in your kitchen, you want to handle the dough as little as possible. So we're going to unwrap it, take the baby out of the blankets, and we're going to divide the dough into four pieces. So what I usually do is cut it in half. All right, and then cut it into quarters. So you have four relatively equal pieces. I'm going to take three of those pieces of dough and I'm going to set them aside. If they are soft, put them right back in the fridge. And if you have to, do what I do. You can throw them in the freezer for a few minutes. Just don't forget about them. Or you'll have frozen rugula dough, which is, you can just make it later. Now I know you're always saying to me, don't use a lot of flour, because I've always told you not to use a lot of flour. Here you need some flour. This is a different type of dough. This dough is mostly fat. So we're going to be, oh, we're using a lot of flour. We need a lot of flour. And I'm going to put this in the center, this piece of dough. And a rectangle is the shape of the day. We want a 12 by 8 inch rectangle. So I'm going to sort of pre-shape this just with my hand, just press down lightly. And we want to get a 12 by 8 inch rectangle. So now I have like a little mini weird looking rectangle, but we'll get it. It looks like a trapezoid. So I'm going to start rolling. If you want to get your rolling pin with a little flour, that would be good too. And when you start rolling, I'm going to show you, do not roll really hard over that. If you do over the edge, you'll actually squeeze your dough uh, and it will actually get very, very thin on those edges. So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to rotate. I want to always make sure I can roll my dough uh, in every direction and it doesn't stick. Now I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And you notice it's squaring off, which is what I want. So on the, I roll a little to the right, which is your left, and then I'm really, uh, rolling a little to the right, and then in the middle. And that will sort of square it off. I have a ruler. You want a ruler. You don't want to just estimate. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to be as perfect as humanly possible. So again, we're going for 12 inches. This is a, a ruler that's 12 inches. And we're going by 8. And I think we already have the 8. This is basically 9. If it's a little bit more, don't worry about it. Just get more, uh, more swirls. The one thing I didn't tell you is traditionally, rugula are shaped, uh, the pieces of dough are shaped in a circle and then filled and then cut into pie-shaped wedges and then rolled up like crescents. 
it can be a little sticky and a little harder to work with when you do it like that. I used to make mine like that, and now I don't. Now I actually make them like this, and I'll, you'll see how much easier it is if you make them like this. So we're going to do a measure. We're going to take and see if we have almost have 12 inches. We know we have at least nine. So I'm just going to go a little this way to get my 12. If it's not perfect, you're not going to worry about it. All right, so we have about 12. I'm going to gently take this piece of dough, and you're not going to rip it, and you're gently going to put it onto a sheet pan that's covered with wax paper. Wax paper's the easiest. Just gently bring it over, all right? Just bring it over, and this dough is going to really fall apart on you. Don't overhandle. Don't overhandle, all right? Do it again. Do it again. 12 by 8. Again, make that, show the dough what shape it should be in. Give it a little guide. So this is it. We want a rectangle-ish square just to give it an idea. We don't want a circle. We don't want the state of Texas. We want 12 by 8 inch rectangle. So I'm going to go one way. We're going to make sure we can always move it along. And I'm not rolling over the edge like I told you I would not. We're almost at 12. We're almost there. All right, so now since I'm almost at 12, I'm going to go this way. Try not to roll sideways. I did a little bit for the first piece of dough. Try not to. It's harder to get a perfect uh, rectangle this way. Now, I'm going to start on one side and roll. I'm going to roll in the middle, and then I'm going to roll on the other side. And see how it straightens it right out? It really straightens it right out. Meaning it, it gets the corners so that you're, it's almost a perfect rectangle. Let's measure this. I know we have, we have uh, 12 inches right there. And we have eight, perfect. So it's not that big. Um, so I'm gonna take another piece of wax paper. And you can pre-cut them, it's a lot easier. Just fit it onto your sheet pan. Take your next rectangle and put it on. Put another piece of wax paper on there. Now you can do the same exact thing three times. This is our third piece of dough. Again, suggest a rectangular shape. Push down gently, suggest that rectangle. Cut, make sure you're covered uh, your rolling pin with a little flour. Start going down. Do not go over that lump. I know you're tempted to because you, wanna, you want it to get flattened out. Don't do it yet. We'll get it from the other side when we turn it. All right, so you're almost at, at 12 inches here. Almost there, right? So now we're going to turn it. I'm going to flip it over. And make sure you can always move it. You can always shush it around. If you can't, you don't have enough flour. Reflour, okay, if you have to. So we're going to go to the left going to go to the middle, and then we're going to go to the right. Left, the middle, and the right. And it should, the rectangle should straighten out. Okay. You're in charge of your dough. Don't say, well, my dough sort of, it formed the state of Texas. I don't know what happened. Well, you're in charge of your dough, right? So you, you have to tell it what you want. So we're at a little bit over eight, and that's fine. Like I said, sometimes you will get a slightly uh, larger uh, width or length, and don't worry about it. We're not, we're just a little under 12. We're trying to get about four dozen rugula, right? About four dozen rugula, and that, that would be really, really great. All right, so we're a little over eight, and then again, look what I'm doing. You can sort of, sort of pat down, you get more rectangle uh, shape that way if you, if you go off course. 12, by just about eight, okay? Putting it down, okay? Last piece. This can be done very quickly and easily. Okay, here we go. Rectangle, shape it, shape it, work it. Show it who's boss in a gentle way. 
Okay, here we go. Don't go over that hump there. Do not do it. And then we're going to flip it over. And make sure you always keep that rectangular shape because once you lose it, it's hard to get back. Trust me, it's hard to get back. So we have more of a square, so I'm going to flip it. And I can move it always. Now I'm going a little to the left, a little in the middle, and a little to the right. And I think we're almost at, almost at a foot. Okay. And I like this French rolling pin. If you notice, it doesn't have uh, the handles to it. It sort of tapers. Those are my favorite, so that's what I use. But you can use any type of rolling pin you want. We're still not at eight. So I'm going to gently flip it over. You have to be gentle with this dough. Don't, don't be hard with this dough. Be gentle. It's loaded with fat. And once those gluten strands are coated, it's very tender. It's going to break. All right. Are we at 8? We're a little bit above, above 8, but we're definitely at 12. So we're good. So what I'm going to do now is cover that with plastic wrap, the whole thing, so it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to put it in the fridge for about an hour just to keep the dough from getting too soft. As our dough is chilling, it's time to make our ganache filling. And we have to let it cool down first. So what we're going to do is, in a pot, we're going to heat one cup of heavy cream. And that's what ganache is. It's cream and chocolate. And sometimes there's little accoutrements added, uh, like butter or sugar or liqueurs. Uh, or other flavorings, but we don't need this today. We are just making a very simple filling. We're going to bring this heavy cream to a simmer. Uh, sometimes I even let it go to a boil. What you do want to do is watch it. You never want to walk away because cream can overflow very quickly. It's got water in it, and once it hits the boiling point, it's just going to pop that uh, fatty cream out of the pan. So you're going to watch. It's actually going to uh, heat up very, very quickly. Once it comes to a simmer and you see little bubbles around the edges, that's known as simmering. If you go further, that's boiling when you see the bubbles all over. Then I have two cups of high quality semi-sweet or bittersweet chopped chocolate or chocolate chips. And you can use whatever you want. Just use a high quality, one that has predominantly cocoa butter to it because that's what's going to make it taste so good. You don't, you don't want the hydrogenated vegetable shortening or just regular vegetable shortening, it won't taste as good. Because what we love about chocolate is that cocoa butter. Now look at that, you can see we're almost uh, at a full boil. So at this point, I wanna make sure my cream is ready to go. And I'm just gonna let it go for a little bit because I really want it to melt my chocolate. Now I'm gonna turn my power off to my hot plate and I'm gonna put in my two cups of chips of my chocolate and I'm just going to let it slowly melt. You would want to take this off the heat because this cooktop, this cook plate actually stops. Um, I, the, the heat is stopped so we really want to just whisk gently. It's not going to cause it to boil or anything but you want to whisk it gently. And some of the chocolate will get caught in the middle of the whisk as you can see. Just keep on whisking and it'll melt right out. So we have a second or two to talk about ganache. Ganache is one of my favorite subjects. Ganache is used so many ways, I don't even know if you realize how versatile it is. So I just took a two to one ratio. So I took a two ratio, two cups of chocolate to one cup of heavy cream, right? Two to one. And I'm making this beautiful thick filling. Now, if you change the ratio, and go more cream to chocolate, maybe one and a half uh, times cream to uh, chocolate, you will get more of a sauce. It'll be a more of a thinner chocolate sauce that you could paint a plate with, or you could pour over ice cream, or you could put over a chocolate cake or a fudge brownie uh, anytime you wanted. Now, as you decrease the amount of cream, the mixture will get thicker, and this, ganache is really the basis for the filling of the chocolate candy that we all love, truffles. Those are the basis of truffles, ganache. 
but it's got a lot more chocolate to heavy cream. And what I like to do when I make truffles, and we'll be making truffles uh, for a video very soon, you will see that you can refrigerate it and it will get almost like a clay. And then you shape them into little balls and you can put different things in them like almonds, a fresh raspberry, a cherry, other things, other anything you, you really want. And then you can freeze them, uh, roll them in cocoa powder, freeze them and actually dip them in chocolate to get that double dipping. Look what I've made as we are talking and whisking. Make sure you go into the corners of your pot, the edges of your pot. There's really no corners here, sharp corners. But you want to get into the, into the edges because you want all that chocolate to melt. And you can see how beautiful, it's almost like this rich chocolate river. And if you leave it like that, uh, it will thicken up as it cools down. The cocoa butter is usually solid at room temperature for all chocolate, all high quality chocolate. So if I want to cool it down, and I will, I will put it in the fridge for a little while. So right now we have our ganache and it's lovely. So I'm just gonna take it and with my rubber spatula and I'm going to pour it into a bowl just so that it can cool down a little bit faster. And you wanna get in all the edges when they were little, my kids, if I just said I had some ganache in a pot, I could get them downstairs in less than two seconds. Any other time, forget it. But they love to clean out that, that pot with, uh, with their tongues, really. So here you go. See how beautiful that is? That's lovely. So I'm just going to take a taste. Mmm, absolutely delicious. It's going to be a great filling. So I'm going to take this, chill it, and we're ready to fill our rugula. So we've rolled out our dough to our 12 by 8 inch rectangles, and we have four of them. And I'm going to reach over. I took them out of the refrigerator, and we're ready to do our first one. And what we have to fill them with is our glorious ganache. We also have one and a third cups of finely chopped toasted walnuts. You don't like walnuts? Use any other nut. You don't like nuts or allergic? Leave them out. No problem. And then I have finely chopped dried cherries. I like to finely chop them because it makes cutting the rugula that much easier. If you don't like cherries, you can leave them out or you can use something else, raisins, currants, but you do want fine chop. Um, and, that, and that is a one cup right there. So what I have now is my rectangle and it's on my wax paper. We're gonna be using that wax paper as a guide. So I'm gonna take one quarter cup, and I usually do measure this out because it helps me, you know me and ganache, I love it, right? But if I use too much, it's gonna overflow our rugula, and we want some nice, beautiful layers. So I'm just gonna take about one quarter cup, and I'm gonna pour it in there. And this ganache has been chilling in my fridge uh, just until it's gotten to be a little bit cooler. It doesn't have to get thicker, it just has to be a little cooler. And then we're just going to spread it out like you're spreading cream cheese on a bagel or butter on toast. And you want to get it all, all over, all to the edges. Don't get it on the wax paper if you can help it. I'm using my offset spatula because it's one of my favorite tools. And if you see what's happening here and it's sticking uh, on the bottom, you just go to your measuring and just scrape it off. And that's what's so nice about this offset. It actually is very, very versatile. So I'm just gonna go around, all around to the edges because every layer should have a little ganache in it. So go all the way up to the edges and definitely take your time doing this. Don't, don't rush it. There is no rush. If your dough does get super soft, just take this whole thing, put it on a sheet pan, and put it back in the fridge, and you'll be fine. All right, just don't panic. It's happening again. I'm building up my ganache, so I just want to get that off of there. And then I'm spreading. All right, so I basically have covered everything. And if you rip the dough, don't worry, because it'll be covered, because we're rolling it up. 
So now I'm gonna take a third of a cup, remember we have one and a third cups of finely chopped toasted walnuts. I'm just gonna take um, one of third cup, so I'm div I've divided that one and a third cups into quarters. And just scatter everywhere. Just scatter your walnuts wherever you go on the dough. And just do it as evenly as possible. And then I'm going to take um, about a quarter of these. Just, I'm just going to hand uh, estimate. And they will stick together. These little guys really stick together, especially when you cut them uh, open. They have sticky sticky insides the cherries so you want to make sure you be careful with them and just scatter them around if anybody comes outside the dough put them back in take a little bit more okay so just so you get about one quarter of a cup okay and again it doesn't have to be massively covered with cherries because you don't want that anyway. You want them to be sort of gently scattered around. I take my rolling pin and I'm just going to make sure the cherries and the walnuts adhere to the ganache. So I'm just going to go tap, 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 tap. And then I'm going to put my rolling pin away. I don't want my rolling pin anymore. And then I'm going to use my wax paper as a guide and watch what I'm doing. I'm going to just push down and I'm going to start this spiral process, sort of like you're rolling up a towel. Just gently roll it up. You don't want any air pockets. Just let the wax paper do the work for you. And then once you get to the end, you want the seam side down. And I just fold it here, and I just gently pick it up, and I'm going to put it on a parchment lined sheet pan. Okay, right here. So that is done. Now I have three to go. Very easy. Easy peasy, right? And I don't have to worry about anything. I'm not overhandling my dough uh, because it's on the wax paper. I'm not even touching it with my, uh, my warm hands. Because your body temperature can melt the dough as well. So you want to be careful that you don't. So again, here we go. One quarter cup. All right. And don't be too generous with that ganache. Just one quarter cup. I did that once. I actually added more and it got a little ganache. And even for me, it was like oozing out the edges because you want to see when these puff up uh, and you cut them apart, they're gonna, you're gonna see these spirals of chocolate, walnut, and cherry, and it's just gorgeous. So you don't want to mess it up with too much. Sometimes there's too much of a good thing, even ganache, and I can't believe I'm telling you this, but there is too much of a good thing sometimes. So again, too much ganache on here, just take it, flip it around, and you can only do that with an offset. Really cool that you can do it with an offset. And just spread it around. Sometimes I go ambidextrous and I switch hands. <laughs> I just do that. Um, and just do it around. So whatever, whichever hand feels good to uh, spread, whichever is your stronger spreader hand, use it. All right, so I've done that. Now I take another one-third cup of my walnuts, and I sprinkle and scatter evenly, as evenly as possible. I see you, little guy. You're going back in. And you can see it's just... It's just a matter of just getting it really, really gently uh, scattered. You could even do um, finely chopped crystallized ginger. That would be good in here, too, if you want to leave out your cherries. And then again, I'm going to take and leave half, because I have two more pieces of dough to go, uh, cherries. Leave half and uh, take about a quarter of a cup and just scatter them, these little sticky guys. All right, and separate them if they clump up. Don't let them, don't let them uh, clump up together. Okay, and just scatter them around. They're not going to be as numerous as the walnuts, so don't get upset about that, but everyone will get some cherries, don't worry. All right, rolling pin. Push to adhere. Okay, don't worry if that happens. That will straighten right out. 
and then we start rolling. So start the rolling process gently. If your dough is too hard, make sure it's not overly chilled because it won't roll. So you want to wait until it softens just a little. Sometimes if you chill, it's too hard. Just let it go. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Let's go right to the end. And when you see the seam, you want seam side down. Seam side down, put it next to the other one, uh, several inches away. Now we have only two more to go. Okay, another one quarter cup of ganache. Whoops. Here we go. And you may have some ganache left over. Again, I always uh, make my recipe so you do have a little ganache left over. Put it in an airtight container, uh, date it, label it, and you can freeze it. Perfect on ice cream, perfect when you may have company coming over and you want a little chocolate sauce, even on a store-bought cake if you want to um, do something simple. Super easy to do. Also stays nicely in the fridge. Should keep about two or three months in the freezer, even minimum. Just don't forget about it. No one should forget about ganache. Too good. All right. Okay. Okay. I got a lot there, so I'm not going to add any more. And now I do my one third of walnuts. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. I think I slightly over ganached. Hopefully it'll be okay. I think it will. I'm not going to worry about over ganaching. And then I'm going to take half of these cherries, right, about a quarter of a cup. Sprinkle, ooh, big clump. <laughs> Separate that clump, all right. Chopping cherries is lots of fun. You can do it in the food processor, but you can also take an oiled knife on a cutting board or just spray the knife with nonstick cooking spray and just slowly take a small amount of uh, cherries at a time and then gently uh, cut them. They're a little hard because they're so sticky. All right. Now we're going to adhere. Okay. And then we're going to roll. So start the rolling. You really want to get a tight roll. You want to get as many as many layers as possible. That's your goal. As many layers of ganache, cherries, and walnuts as possible. And then remember that dough is very flaky, and you're going to see that. Okay, you see that? Now we're going to go to a second sheet pan, seam side down. One more to go, and then we're ready. Ready for some rugula. Okay, last one. Okay, one quarter cup. And it's good, you, you know, you might say, well, I don't really want to measure. It's good to actually measure this because you can actually be consistent and each rugula will look um, very, very consistent to the others. And it actually, it looks nicer that way. They're a little more, you know, more um, consistent with each other and they look sort of the same. I always like things to look the same so that nobody says, well, I got a larger rugula than you and cutting them so unevenly. So make sure you do try to be consistent. All right. Spread. This is our last hurrah. This is our last amount. OK, we're going to do the old swipe our offset so we can get the rest of this covered. Again, I'm not adding any more because I don't want to overfill. This looks pretty good already. Get every inch of that dough as best as you can. Okay, now we're just going to use up the remainder of our walnuts and the remainder of our cherries. Okay. We're just going to get them in there. Oh, you guys got to go back in. I'm trying to hide on me. All right. 
cherries. These sticky little guys. Okay. Get them in there, scatter them around. The sweet tartness of the cherries and the um, decadence of the ganache is so good against that flaky pastry. It is absolutely, there's nothing like it. They melt in your mouth. Uh, and I've had people say, these are the best that I've ever had. Now a traditional filling for arugula can be anything from cinnamon sugar to preserves um, and jam. Do whatever you want. If you want to change this out, you can do that. This recipe is in my book, Baking with Success, my newest book, and it actually has an alternate cinnamon sugar filling. So roll, real tight. Roll, roll, roll. All right, we're going to take this one, seam side down, and put it next to the others. Now, before we go into the oven, we have to score, because it's going to be hard to cut these um, once they're baked uh, and get through those cherry pieces. So what I do is, about every half an inch, I'm going to score. Not all the way down, you're just going to cut just a little bit through, just so you have enough to make a knife mark to go all the way through after they come out of the oven. You should get about 12 per log, which means you should have four dozen lovely, lovely uh, rugula. And the ends, I always eat the ends. I always eat them. I love them. So, because they're usually the most imperfect ones, the ends, so you just have to eat them. It's, I, I call it quality control. You have to do it. You have to do it. So I'm going to do that. Same with these. If they get too soft, chill them in the log form, just like this, for maybe a half hour to an hour, and even up to a day, and then, and then score them, and then bake them right off. That'll work very nicely as well. So you can see they're getting a little soft, but we're ready for the oven. So you guys are not, are not going back in the fridge. So keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, so we have about 12 per log. I'm gonna go wash my hands. I am putting these in a 350 degree oven that I have already preheated, and they're gonna go in for 45 to 50 minutes until they're almost golden brown. So our rugula has come out of the oven and it has cooled down and now it's ready to be sliced. And I like to put each log separately on a cutting board. I don't put two logs at a time because when you're cutting, uh, you may end up cutting the other log by accident and we don't want that. So get a nice sharp knife. And I know this is usually a knife you might use on meat, uh, but I like to use it for uh, cutting pastry sometimes. So you're gonna go over to where the scored part is and I'm, do not use a serrated knife. Some people will use a serrated knife when they see little things in the dough, like cherries and nuts and things. I find it is less, uh, it, it breaks the dough less or the, the pastry less if you just go straight down gently. And you can see uh, how it, it, it just looks lovely like that. So I'm gonna put this over here, just gently balance yourself and you can just See those beautiful layers? We had a nice tight log. You want to let these logs cool a little bit because if you don't, uh, the ganache will, will actually, you know, sort of um, messy up or sully the, uh, the slices because it'll be melted. And I can actually hear, I don't know if you can, very quietly, you can actually hear the, me breaking with the knife through the pastry and it's so flaky I can actually see the flakes it's just lovely so when I'm done with these not everyone does this but I do like them when they're sugared I'm gonna do my next log my last log and I'm just gonna gently put them down Again, the ends, if they're not as pretty as the others, you just eat those, because that's what I like to do. And they're absolutely delicious. Nothing in rugula goes to waste. 
I'm gonna keep slicing. And it, this knife is so nice and sharp, it goes right through the nuts, it goes right through the cherries. Look at that, look at that, look at that gorgeousness right there. I'm gonna move it, move them away so I don't cut, double cut them. And then we're gonna sugar them and plate them. All right, and you're gonna have about 48, maybe even a few more if uh, you've cut them a little bit thinner than I have. And I take like a little sieve and just sort of dust the top. Sometimes I actually put confectioner sugar in a bowl and sort of roll them around in the confectioner sugar so they really get covered. Almost like a, a wedding cookie um, when you take those little babies out of the oven you, and you roll them in uh, sugar. But I just love to do that. I, I love the way they look. And I love the contrast of the sugar, the whiteness of the sugar. It almost looks like snow. And the chocolate inside. So pretty. So beautiful. So gorgeous. So I'm going to put a few, on, a few on here. You can see how they look. They're beautiful. Just beautiful. These will freeze. You can freeze these in an airtight container for three or four months. Separate each layer of them with wax paper in an airtight container, date it, label it, and you can have rugula whenever you want. So look how beautiful. Now I wanna open one up for you. I'm gonna break it apart. And I want you to see, remember this is very flaky. You can actually see the flakes. So the layers of dough and the fat, they've separated and they've puffed up and they're, they're just, it's melt in your mouth, delicious. So I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Uh, this has been such a fun video to do for you. For more videos and recipes, please visit me at gailsokol.com. Until next time.